everyone, and thank you for joining Digital Fine Art with a Touch of Grunge, featuring Caroline Julia Moore. This is the second time that we have invited Caroline to conduct a webinar because her artistic perspective is so unique, interesting, and beautiful. Her neuropsychology background and study of language using functional imaging has greatly influenced her art. Although Caroline will be demoing in Particle Shop today, the brushes that she's using also work in Painter. So that's it for me, and I'll go ahead and pass it over to you now, Caroline. Great, thank you. That's a, a lovely introduction. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to start off by just showing you a couple of my pieces of art and just highlighting the difference that Particle Shop has made to each of these pieces. And I'm going to start with this one, which you will probably recognize for the promotional um, email for the webinar. And this is how the image looked without the Particle Shop work. And you can see the difference, first of all, with this hand lighting, and then with some work on the hair. these brushes around the edges of the model, some dust particles, and I've also made it look as though these roses are kind of dripping, and some more dust. So that one has made a big difference from there to here. And I'm just running through these ones, but I'm going to go in a lot more detail with a new piece of art that we're going to work on stage by stage. But this one here, if we have a look before. So I've started off by using some dispersion brushes, some effects on her hair. and then highlighted some of these areas on the flowers and lights going off of her fingers. And you'll see it's really quite easy to stack up these effects and make a huge difference to your work. One thing that you will notice that I do in all of my images is that I will save each stage onto their own layer. And this is so that I can then go and adapt them later or change the different, um, change the excuse me, change the different way that the layers are. Sorry, I've got this notification. There we go. And this one here. Sorry about this. Here's the image before the particle shop work. And then I've added some work on the wings, on the model's hair, and then added these blue areas. Okay, so what we're going to do in this webinar is we're going to um, create an image like this from this starting point. And we'll do this in stages. We'll start by adding some hair, adding this detail to the material of um, the model's dress. Use some pointillism brushes here to create this really nice dispersion effect. And then add some kind of science fiction bubbles here and some final dispersion and speckles and rain effects. Okay, so we'll start at the beginning. So to open Particle Shop, we're going to duplicate the layer we're working on. And you can access Particle Shop either from your filter menu and here in Painter Particle Shop or from your extensions menu 
here we are. So you'll have some options here. And I've already duplicated this layer, so I'm just going to use the active layer so that Particle Shop can work on this. Click Launch Particle Shop. There we go. So this is the Particle Shop interface. And we're going to start off by adding some hair to the model. So you can zoom in by going to this um, icon here. We'll zoom in by about 75%. And I'm going to go down and look at my brush packs and select hair. And for this image, I'm going to use the wild hair brush. And you'll see various different options here. This is to do with the brush size. This is the opacity. And then this one here is the value variability. And I'm just going to show you the differences that these make. So here, this size is set to 10. But we can make the brush much larger. I'm using um, a Wacom tablet, so my stylus is pressure sensitive. There we go. So here is the opacity. And this one here is really useful for using with hair um, because it shows lots of variability in the colors. So let's put that right up to 46%. And you'll notice that you get a nice combination of colors as you move the brush. So for this image, I'm going to have a brush of about size 8. I'll put the opacity up to about 90. But I'm going to lower this to this value variability to about 20. So you'll see these icons here. I'm going to select the eyedropper tool. And from this, I'm going to sample a color from the model's hair. And you'll see the corresponding color on the color wheel. So we'll click on the brush. And I'm going to start very lightly adding in some strokes. And I'm not being heavy handed with this. I'm just gradually building up the effects. which gives it a much more realistic feel. And in the hair pack, there are lots of different types of brushes. But this one's particularly good for this kind of wavy look. You can get a good sense of movement. I'm just building up this effect. I'm going to add a little bit of glow to this, which will really brighten up some of the strands. So you just click this option here. And I'm using quite light pressure because it, it's quite a strong effect. But it's nice just to build up a few of these lighter areas that's a bit too much so you can always go and press the undo option S 
switch the glow off and choose an orangier colour. Just work in some more strands. We're nearly done. You'll see there that some of the hair's gone over her face, so I'm going to just click the eraser option here and just remove that. Okay, let's save this brushwork. So here you have an option of merging your brushes with your image or saving just the brush strokes and I will always just save the brush strokes so that you can then manipulate these within Photoshop. So here's the work that we've just done. Let me just zoom in a little. And it's important to realise that you don't have to just leave the output how it has come from Particle Shop. You can then adjust it within Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. And on the bottom layer, I'm going to add a motion blur to really add to the sense of movement and just blend in these colours a little more. So filter, blur motion blur and I set this at an angle and you can vary the distance I think that's about right so this is the layer beneath and then this is the original brushwork output from particle shop I'm going to reduce the opacity of that a little and it just creates a little bit more of a blended effect. Let me just put these in a folder. And then that, surprisingly enough, hair. So that was before and after. And it's made a huge difference already. And, you know, we've only spent about five minutes on this so far. So we're going to go now and add some effects to the material of the model's dress. Now you can use these different options here to duplicate visible layers, um, but unfortunately it doesn't work with folders like this. So I'm just going to merge all of these visible layers and stick with the use active layer option and click launch particle shop. And this time I'm going to go into the Fabric Fantasy brush pack. Again, we'll zoom in. And I'm going to use the um, raw brush here. And I'm going to sample a mid-tone of the dress. There we go. Let's deselect glow. We'll go back into brush. And I've set the brush size as quite small for this. And here is the opacity option. If I just increase the brush size, you can see the effect of this brush. Let's go back down to about 50. And I'm just going to slowly work around the edges to start with. Using quite light touches on the stylus. So that the brushwork blends in with the material.
You can also add glow to this as well, which adds a really nice colour to the material. Oh, that went a little bit over the top. And you may find that you like to zoom back out to have a more global view of your image. You can always zoom back in again after. And you can very quickly build up these really nice ethereal effects to material that whilst they look surreal, they don't look out of place. Or sample a different colour from the dress. Slightly richer blue. And you'll see that I'm actually going over the main part of the material with this brush as well just so that it blends it better and a bit more glow this gives it a lovely electric feel I think that will do for now. So again, I'm just going to save the brush strokes. Let me just zoom out. Okay. So this time I'm going to duplicate the layer two times. One, two. And on this bottom layer, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur just so that all of these colours are blended in a bit better with the material of the actual dress. Think about 18. On this next layer, I'm going to add a motion blur. And here's our original output. I'll duplicate this Gaussian blur and bring it to the top, reducing the opacity. And this has created a little bit more blending to make the material look a little bit more organic. Now I'm going to group these into a folder. Let's just call that dress. This time I'm going to add a layer mask. Um, actually, firstly, I can see there's a bit of a overlap there on the material that doesn't look so good. So let's just lower this brush size. And using a layer mask, I can just remove that effect. So on this layer mask, I'm going to increase my brush size and I'm going to lower the opacity about 52% and just lessen the effect as the image goes down. There we go. 
just so that you get a bit of a gradiated feel. Okay. Right, so I've then merged all of these visible layers and we'll use this active layer and we'll go in to add some pointillism effects. And this is from a new brush pack. Let's just open it up. There we go. So I'm going to start with a tear brush. Just checking my notes to see what size. There we go. Right. So with this brush, you'll notice there's a different icon here, and this will show you some hue variability. So the further the percentage goes up, the more variability away from your starting point will be shown within the um, particles. So let me show you. Let's increase this brush size. Okay. So here, if we have zero variation, you'll see this blue. Let's increase this up to 50%. And you'll get all of the colors 50% away from this blue. Obviously, that's an extreme effect there, and you can adjust the variability and the opacity. OK, so for this one, I'm going to have a brush size of about 120. I'll leave the opacity at 100%. And I think I'll leave this hue variability at about 15. And if you look at your color wheel, you'll notice that as you move the area on the wheel, you'll see the different variables and variations of color within this little square. So I'm going to go for this kind of effect. And start adding in some of these points. And I'm just going along the edges of the previous brushwork on the material. Okay. And you can also use the glow option. Just build up your effects. I'm going to actually go and grab the blending tool here just to blend in these bright areas because I find them a bit distracting to the overall effect. And this is a good tool to use when you don't want to completely erase your work. You just want to merge some of these brush outputs together. Okay, I think I will use a different brush. So we'll go down to the Georges brush. This gives a different type of pointillism effect. 
And it's almost like a, a dispersion effect, really, that we're getting here. Let's add some lighter areas. Okay. Right, so we'll save that brushwork. Okay, there we go. I'm going to duplicate this and add a motion blur to the lower level. So filter, blur, motion blur. I don't want such a strong motion effect. So about 27 pixels. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of this. Let's just group these together. Get my stylus to work. And I think I might actually just reduce the saturation a little. So go into levels, uh, sorry, layers. New adjustment layer, vibrance. We'll clip this so that it's only going to be active on this folder. And just lower saturation slightly. OK. So let's add some of these kind of science fiction type orbs. I've merged these previous layers. Launch particle shop. Okay, so for this effect, I'm going to use the wedding brush pack. And I'm going to start with the bubbles. Okay, so here you'll see we've got the usual size and opacity. But this option here gives you the count of particles from your starting point. I think I'll choose a lighter colour. This kind of colour. And I'm going to use a large brush. About size. Okay. And then I'm just going to press down the stylus. And you'll see that this brush creates these lovely bubble orbs. And because I've got the um, option set to stylus sensitivity, this will alter the opacity and the size depending on the pressure of the stylus. You get some really nice effects with this brush. OK, then I'm going to go into the light circles. I'm using a much smaller brush here. And I'm going to add some small circles within these bubbles. And you really can create some great designs with this. Just dot these around. Okay. 
and you can use this brush as a stamp like I'm doing here but you can also use the brush by dragging it along to create these kind of interesting effects wasn't so keen on the first one And they're good fun to just play around with this different type of effects. And with each image, you're creating something very unique. So you're not just using a stamped brush. we go almost done with this I think I will just vary the size a little add some more circles and you can obviously spend a lot more time than I'm doing here and create a really intricate design. And I think that's it enough for now. Okay, so we'll save that. Again, I'll save only the brush strokes. And you will sometimes find that your output from Particle Shop when you go into Photoshop is a little oversaturated compared to how it was in the Particle Shop interface. So you may just want to adjust this. I'm just going to lower the saturation. So as I did before, I'm going to duplicate these layers. I'll start with a Gaussian blur. There we go. I'm going to use quite a strong blur just so that these shapes are blended into the background. So that's without the blur and with and I'll add a motion blur on this one and leave this one as the original output put those into a group and I think I'll lower the opacity of these. And you can always add a layer mask and adjust the opacity of various different points, which I think I will do. So that you can be more specific in the way that your work blends with your image. Obviously, this would be a lot more difficult to do if you weren't able to save the brushwork onto its own layer. OK, so let's try a different effect. I'm 
And I think this time we'll add some dispersion effects to the top part of the image. So for this, I'm going to go to the Impression folder. There we go. And I think I'll start off with the Poppies brush option. And this is one of the brushes that blends your particles, so it gives a really good dispersion effect. And I'm just going to go over these orbs. And disperse these pixels a little. I think I will just delete this bit. And I think we'll use the paint splatters and create a dusting of particles. Another nice brush that I like to use actually is the Fairy Dust brush. Let me just reduce the size. It gives you a nice trail of, of magic dust. I just put some around her dress. And then I'm going to go into the spring brush pack and choose shower. But for this, I'm going to choose an orangey color. Uh, this kind of color, I think. And you'll see you've got these lovely raindrops. Just add a bit more interest to your image. Let's just zoom in. I just want to check that this hasn't gone over the model's face. Okay, let's grab the eraser tool. There we go. And save this work. Okay. So I think I'm going to start by lowering the opacity of this. And you can then start working on these individual layers. For example, you may want the, um, let's have a look. You may want the rain to be beneath these orbs. Uh, let's have a look. We could move these points. It's not making a huge amount of difference, to be honest. Oh, sorry, I've just altered the vibrance there. Let's clip this. There we go. So I think I'm going to group all of the brushwork into a folder. And lower the opacity slightly. And 
I think I will add a vibrance adjustment layer. Reduce the vibrance and saturation. But I only want this reduction on certain areas. So I'm going to inverse the layer mask, which is control and I to inverse the effects. And with a white brush, desaturate some of these points. Well, I've kind of zoomed through that a little bit, so um, I don't know whether whether there are any questions or whether I can go back over anything. I don't actually hear anything. Hi, Caroline. I just Hi, do have sorry. um <laughs> that's okay. I have one question for you, and that's just uh they're asking what brush you, you've used on the hair. So if you wouldn't mind maybe just letting um the listeners know what brush that was. Absolutely. That was from the hair pack, and it was the wild hair brush. So if you want, I can I can open that up actually. Okay. And I love using the hair brushes and I think it's good to remember that you can do more blending and stuff with them than, you know, the initial output because you can get some very painterly effects, but you can also get some quite realistic effects with these brushes. So if we go into the hair folder, and the one that I used was the wild brush. So this one here. Okay. There's another question here just about getting the particular color. Mm -hmm. So would you mind maybe using the eyedropper tool to show how you can sample the color? Absolutely. Yes, you've got these these tools here to the left of your screen and you go to the eyedropper, click on it and then let me just zoom in. You can press on different areas of your image and you'll notice that the color wheel I'm pointing it like you can see me pointing at it but the, the color wheel actually changes as to where you put your eyedropper so for example here I've sampled a kind of dark orangey color There's a, another question here, actually a couple questions about all of the brush packs that you've used yeah. today. Um, so if that's too long for you to go over again, I would be happy to write that out um, and I've include got, in our follow-up email. I've got them listed actually, so that's, that's no problem. Um, so oh, let me just get my pieces of paper. So I started off using the hair brush pack and then I went to use the fabric fantasy pack for this dress work. Um, and then for these dotted effects here, this is a new brush pack, which I actually only started playing with this morning. And it, it's a great pack. It's called the pointillism pack. Let's see if I can find it. There we go. And it gives you all of these different kind of dotted effects as if you were doing a pointillism painting, but it takes much less time. Um, then for the bubbles and the circles, I used the wedding pack. And for the dispersion effects at the end, I used the impression pack. 
I hope that helps. Yes, that's great. Thank you. And that answers about all of our questions that we've gotten in. Okay, great. So we can go ahead and wrap this up if there's nothing else that you wanted to show, Caroline. I think I've zoomed through it. I'm very sorry if I've gone too fast. Um, okay, great. That's no problem. So I just would like to say thank you so much, uh, Caroline. You're and welcome. Thank you and thank you to everyone who joined us today. Um, as I mentioned briefly, you will receive a follow-up email with a link to this recording um, and including a registration link to our next webinar coming up in June. So that's all we have for now, and uh, we hope everyone has a great day. Thanks very much. Bye now. Bye.